the competition we're seeing today was set originally for one week ago, but something bad happened right here in the left lane. Charlie Allen, the track owner, had completely rebuilt the concrete launch pads, trying to make them perfect, but apparently some badly mixed concrete started to come apart. Several of the alcohol cars crashed in the left-hand lane. None of them could get any traction. By the way, there were no injuries, but NHRA and Charlie Allen said, hold it. They canceled the event. We've been rained out before, but never laned out. Now it's been rebuilt again and appears to be absolutely perfect, as good as we found anywhere in the country. Well, the work has been done, and according to the times today, the two lanes are just about equal. Everyone seems very happy, especially the racers. A real interesting pair up next. Rookie drivers with very experienced help. First of all, there's Corey McClanathan coming out of the top alcohol dragster ranks, buying a car from Daryl Gwynn, the machine that Frank Holly drove for the Gwynn family last year. Daryl is serving as an advisor to Corey McClanathan. Then, opposite Corey, is Craig Smith from Washington State. He has brought back two-time Winston Top Fuel Director champion Gary Beck as his crew chief. And some have commented on how quickly Craig Smith has adapted to these cars. Well, when you're a professional crop duster pilot, not much scares you. Corey McClanathan has made hundreds of runs down the quarter mile in sportsman cars, including uh, high-powered alcohol dragsters. So you might give the driving edge just a little bit to him, just for as many times as he has left the starting line. So it's the Mac attack from California versus the man from Washington State, Craig Smith, in the far lane. And for those of you that don't remember Gary Beck, his specialty was fuel systems, and that's how he made the good runs in the old days. Staged and ready here in round two, top fuel action. Both drivers with lots of problems. Craig Smith wins it with some evil-looking fire out of the pipes. There's an engine damage there. Corey McLanathan never really got a hold of the racetrack. Smoked the tires almost the entire quarter mile. Let's go to Brock Yates back at the starting line. Well, Gary, uh, 522, uh, what do you think? There looked like a lot of smoke down to the other end. Is that just tire smoke, or do you think you got some engine problems? Well, I turned the tires out in the middle, but uh, we leaned on pretty hard. We didn't get our full run in uh, first breath, and, uh, you know, we could certainly have some engine damage. But it's nice to get a wind line right now. Craig's doing a good job, and uh, we're happen happy to have Pioneer on board us and uh, get us to a few races this year. Good job. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. So, Gary back wrenching on the Pioneer stereo car of Craig Smith. Had he seen the fire of the pipes we saw, Big Daddy, he'd know there was engine damage. You bet. He's got engine damage. Next up, Frank Holly versus Don the Snake Perdome. And what a race this ought to be. Both of them recorded 5.02 elapsed times in the first round. And it sure is great to see the Snake running good. He, like Bernstein, did not have a good year last year. And so now the car seems to be running great and it's going to be a good race. In a still young career, Craig Smith, for the first time you're going to the Final Four at a big race, and you had to do it by coming from behind. Yeah, we really, every time this thing's running, it's running a little better every time. Gary's really picking up on the thing. Well, you're going to have to get out of the 520s now and get into the 50s if you're going to continue this great day. That's what I told Gary last night. We're going to have to forget about all of these 505s and say, we got to go right into 496s and run with Gary and Joe. How comfortable are you racing this kind of competition? Are you nervous at all? Not really, no. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's just fun being out here with these guys. Well, Gary has all the driving experience. Does he help you in that area as well? Maybe calm you down a bit? Yeah, Gary's real good. He's real calm all the time. It's, it's, a, it's a real good team we've got put together here. It's working out real good. Pleasure to talk to you for the first time. Thank you. Well, we're going to find out how good they are because they got a little bit of work to do before the next round. There's Jerry Gwynn backing up Frank Hall. You can see the concern on his face. They have a formidable competitor in the other lane. Oh, absolutely. Don Perdome, two weeks ago, made the final round of the Winter Nationals, and he crashed into the Krieger Four Second Club at 4.93 seconds, a number that uh, no one has equal here at Phoenix all weekend long. Now, Frank Holly, however, is the number one qualifier, the man from Gainesville, Florida, who operates the drag racing school at Gainesville Raceway, qualified at 4.96 seconds to beat Dick LaHaye in round number one. Don Perdome didn't qualify quite as well, a 5.09, but he did defeat Tommy Collada in round number one. So this could be, uh, well, quite a drag race, Don, and certainly a couple of very popular drivers, the Snake and Frank Hawley. Well, I spoke to Perdome in the pits, and it's really great, Steve, to see him up for a change. Last year he was down, you know, he, he knew his car wasn't running right, and he just didn't think they were going to get it running right, but today... He's running tough. And he's got a new crew chief by the name of John Medlin, and that guy has given him a lot of confidence. Ah, oh, Perdome loses traction, blows the tires off, and Frank Ollie storms to 5.00, five seconds flat, 
at a big speed here in Arizona, 283 miles per hour. Let's go to Brock with the winning crew chief. Can any five flat, not all that bad, right? You got to feel good about that? Pretty good. Yeah, well, that's uh, all we're trying to do is run five flat. <laughs> okay. That was it. All right. That's what the man said. Ken Benny, a man of few words. And now the pairings for the top fuel final four. We have Frank Holly versus Craig Smith. Frank Holly has lane choice. On the other side of the ladder, we have Kenny Bernstein versus Joe Amato. And Joe Amato has the lane choice. Let's go to the far end with Steve. Well, they call Frank Holly the professor. Let's see how good he really is. What do you think it ran, Frank? Well, it seemed to me that it ran about as good as it did the first time. Maybe... I don't know. I'll tell you, I was kind of concerned about Prudhomme because he flat, flat. Well, that's that's pretty close. If I can guess within a couple hundreds, right. uh, my guess is he might have smoked the tires because I saw him for an instant and he disappeared. And uh, lane choice, I think, might end up being more of a factor later on this afternoon than we earlier thought. You know, this car doesn't seem to leave the starting line like it should. I mean, performance-wise, it does, but it seems to maybe a little hesitation in it. I hope that's not me. Well, I was trying to get you off the hook. <laughs> Well, if it hesitates and wins, that's all we really care about. Indeed. 